Hi, I'm Matt Newman from Elite Defense Systems. What I'd like to do in this video clip is explain how we in Jeet Kune Do deal with a weapon on weapon attack. Now, a lot of times I'll have students tell me, listen, I don't carry a weapon. You have to understand that awareness is the first step. There are so many kinds of improvised weapons around you on a regular basis. I don't care if you're at the office, at home, or maybe out on the night of the town. What you need to do is, is grab anything. If you ever attack with a weapon, grab an equalizer of any sort. I don't care if it's a bar stool, a scrap piece of metal, or maybe a beer bottle. Grab anything. Your car keys will even work as well. In this case, when it's a weapon on weapon kind of attack, what we do is we borrow the concept called defanging the snake. What defanging the snake is, is going ahead, and if I can borrow Joe real quick here, when he comes out with a weapon, I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not going to block. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut the hand that's holding his weapon. That's going to lead to a disarm. The great thing about this is, is that it takes the guesswork out of so many hours people put in practicing their blocks. You see, the problem is, is that if someone goes up and throws an attack and I block, let's say, the problem is this knife is so close to me actually getting cut. The other thing you kind of want to keep in mind is, is now we have to turn blocking or self-defense into a memorization game. I mean, think about it. You know, I have to think, okay, Joe's throwing, let's say, an angle seven. Now I have to respond with a block 15. The point is, is that it takes not only time to learn it, but now time to think about it if, God forbid, we ever get into that altercation. By training under this concept of the fang and the snake, the beautiful thing is, regardless of what angle Joe attacks me on, I have one solution that takes care of all these different problems. Always cut or smack the hand. I say smack the hand because if I would have a blunt weapon, now I'm smacking the hand, I'm not cutting or slicing it. So what I'd like to do here is just review what we simply call a three and three drill. Joe's gonna feed me three angles. I'm going to cut, cut, and cut. You'll see me do one more thing here, which is moving back. We have to move back, because if Joe stabs on in, even if I am successful in cutting the hand, this weapon could still come in here. So what I want to do is I want to have insurance on my side. As this comes in, I cut, but I also move back. So you're gonna see us move around the room right here, Joe's going to feed three angles. I'm going to cut and move back, cut and move back, cut and move back. At the exact same time that I'm going to feed Joe three different angles. The great thing is we can feed whatever kind of angles we want. We're not boxed on in by saying we can only feed this angle or this angle because that's the only ones we have blocks or counters for. The beautiful thing is, is this concept adapts to anything. So, three and three drill. Now you saw right there that I gave Joe a really, really low feed. Now if he maybe didn't have a block, he'd be out of luck. Joe simply did have the solution. He takes one slice of the person's incoming limb, and that's what's going to lead to a distance. 